Hey, what's up, and welcome to another Chicago Beer Pass beer review. And we're going far away this time. Man, the uh, western edge of the UK, man. The little island, man. The, mm-hmm. the, the Emerald Island. You're right. Uh, we're drinking uh, the stout from <laughs> <laughs> Donegal. All right, so Brad went to Ireland mm-hmm. for like nine, ten days. Yep. You know, and um, this is our first at back since he's returned. So Yeah, so uh, I picked up. Four bottles of their beer. Yeah. Twelve dollars. Oh. Twelve euro. So like maybe maybe four fifty each, but a bomber. Yeah. Four dollars. You know. We know it's three dollars because I got four of them for twelve. Four of them. Three dollars. That's throwback prices right there, man. Like what? What's happening here? Dude, they want you to drink, man. Well, you know? also, ingredients: water. Barley, hops, yeast. There you go. Simple. There you go. And I know they got those. Uh, they got those mountains over there where a lot of the water comes from <laughs> for the beer. You know, it's all kind of romantic stories about about how they get down over there, man. Yeah. And this is four point four percent. Yeah. So, I think I said on the beer pass episode, I was talking to the guy at. The, the bartender at this brewery or where they brew some of this and he said the goal is to have beers you can drink a lot of uh, that's the irish way you want to be able to drink for a long time and you want to hang out at the bar you want to hang out at the pub yeah you know and then like um you know and then like even like uh they'll tell you like it's more about the pub experience is all about like no music, you know, and if there's and if there's you know if there's any entertainment, it's like a dude in the corner on acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. but uh, no TVs. It's all about beer and conversation, right? Yeah. they'll say that to you. We walked into some brewery at some point, or no, some pub. No music, like twenty dudes in there. Uh, me, my wife, and her sister came in, and it was like silent <laughs> as soon as we walked in, and they started speaking Gaelic. Oh, Gaelic's like a language that's not English like that? Uh, it's the Irish language. Oh. So they right like on. started talking, speaking that as soon as we walked in. It was, we were in like the middle of nowhere. Man. But, uh, yeah, this brewery was pretty nice. I did dig their beers. I had like a little flight. So it was good. The, the big chocolate, big, big malt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of aroma for uh, 4%. But then, like, Ooh. I'm kind of bracing myself for, like, this really... Like, punch? Yeah, this really dense, like, heavy, like, roasted experience. But then, like, it's actually just kind of light and slick and just kind of effortless. Right. You know? We were drinking the, the uh, Defender from Half Acre. Not Half Acre. Hay Market yeah. uh, previously here. And this just feels like... Almost a watered down version of that, even right? Like that's. It's yeah, a, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. Yeah, it's not. I don't. I don't want to say it's bad or anything. The, the I contrast, think it's, the, but the contrast from the aroma and the actual taste is is totally different. Because mm-hmm. you're expecting like rich chocolate, like you know, not not necessarily all the way through, but you're expecting like maybe a, a nice, heavy chocolate aftertaste or something. When right. You, when you when you sip it, when you smell it. But you don't get that at all. But this could easily just be a pale ale. It just happens to be, it just happens to be black, right? <laughs> like four percent. That's barely even a pale ale at that point. I don't know. It's just. Now, the, what bar? Do you remember? Um, let's see. Uh, Donegal sits on the uh, the River Ernie. It's the uh, it's Ireland's oldest town, uh, Bally Shannon. Mm-hmm. Right on. Uh, so yeah, we stopped in Ballyshanna. Then we went to uh, it was Dice's Riley's, mm-hmm. and that was the the bar or the place that you know serves their beer and sells some of their beer. So that's where we were. Yeah, it, it's kind of odd. Like I don't know, you don't want to say that Guinness like popularized like the session category, right? Because you know I'm pretty sure you know in the 1800s there were a lot of session beers. I mean I could be wrong though, right? But I'd imagine, like, back then, there were session beers, but then you think about old ales and, you know, and shit like that. It's like, barley wines have been around forever, too. Right, but, but they weren't making beers to get drunk. We don't know that. 
I think I think I think the barley wine category was probably around back then, though, right? It just probably happened, right? And probably like, <laughs> oh, I didn't drink that in time, kind of thing, or like. But they definitely, that's definitely like Irish breweries would have they popularized having session beers, like to your point, what you sure, were saying yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like um, let's have a beer with big flavor, um, small small ABV, mm-hmm. and let let that kind of be our our hallmark. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they they probably do a better job of that than. They probably they had they got a head start on that before before we did. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And we just have a, it's a completely different drinking culture. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, you know, it's more, I don't know. It's part of it. So four percent is like, it's nothing, and it's nothing to us because we have beers that are like, ten, thirteen. Yeah, I mean, craft brewers, man, just to get noticed, they were kind of saying, hey, you know, let's make beers that are have these wild flavors that throw mm-hmm. back to old styles, or then more importantly, have a higher have a, are bigger. Are bigger in alcohol, yeah. There's like a um. There's almost like a little berry note in there, right? There's, you yeah, know, there you is. Get, you get the the traditional coffee flavors in the stout, but you get like a little underlying yeah and berry note. In there. It's so light, it could go with food really well. Like it's not gonna interfere. It's not gonna be thick and filling. It's just kind of it's it's there, right? Yeah, you have these beers, and you're reminded of the versatility of darker beers, you know, because darker beers can be intimidating for folks you know mm-hmm. but it's something like this is not and it's a good it's a good example of the range of dark beer yeah, yeah. that's true when you say stout people are like oh I'm, that's too heavy for me it's too hot and all that bullshit yeah and like oh four percent and it's it's the body is thin it's light it just has that roast and like yeah. you said that little bit of almost fruitiness happening yeah it's almost got more in common with like a um like a like a cola than like a w- than a wine like a dark wine, you know it's got more in, in line with something that you would associate with refreshing and a weird kind of s- stout way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nice, cool. Yeah. All right, well we'll uh, probably finish this bottle off four percent, no problem for us, yeah. and we'll get out of here. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking these out. Check out the podcast. We'll be back soon. Take care. Cheers.